Good evening all and welcome back to Dante Armors Gaming. Now today, as the thumbnail suggests, we are going to be looking at EVGA's GeForce 1070 Ti Superclock Black Edition. So, I contacted EVGA because I wanted two new graphics cards for my Arctic Storm build because, yes, the 1070s are good, but I wanted something with a little bit more power. Um, so they sent me on over a 1070 Ti. Now, I have got another one on its way, but it hasn't arrived yet, unfortunately. And uh, no, this video is not sponsored by EVGA. I thought I'd do a little product review so you guys can see what you're going to get. So the similarities between the 1070 and the 1070 Ti is both can game at uh, both can sorry game at 4K. Both have GPU Boost 3. Both have the ACX 3.0 cooling technology, and both have a bandwidth of 256 gigabytes, 8 gigabytes, or DDR5. Now. What's the differences between the 1070 and the 1070 Ti? Is one the CUDA core count. The 1070 has 1920 CUDA cores, whereas the Ti has 2432, so a massive jump in the CUDA core count, increasing your performance in gaming. The base speed of the 1070 is at 1594 MHz and a boost speed of nine, uh, 17, sorry, 184 MHz. 1070 Ti, however, has 1607 plus megahertz base and a boost of 1683 plus megahertz. So, they, there's some differences. Basically, the boost is uh, not only is a bit lower on the 1070 Ti, but it can go much further. The base is higher on the Ti, whereas the 1070 it isn't that much. Both have one BIOS. So only you can't sort of jump between two bases and reflash them and so on and so forth. And both have two-way SLI. So why have I gone for 1070 Ti's? Basically I wanted more power. And if at the end of this video you like what you see, then please jump on over to EVGA. My affiliate code will be at the end of this uh, video. And you can purchase products using my affiliate code and get a discount. So let's go ahead and open up the 1070 Ti and see exactly what you're going to get. So, as with every EVJ, EVGA product, sorry, they do send out quite a bit of stuff. So I don't need the box. And I'll stick that to one side for now. So, every customer gets a poster. You all get an 8-pin power connector for the PCIe 8-pin um, connector on the side of the GPU. But obviously if you've got a PSU that's fully modular, you will have those already with it. And you get a handful of pamphlets. So one is your user guide with the installation disk on the inside. However, connect your computer to the internet, go on over to NVIDIA and you can download the drivers for the graphics card. You also get this little pamphlet that says build the system that fits you perfectly. And if I go on a bit closer here, as you can see, the products that they supply and basically promoting their overclocking software, which is the EVGA Precision XOC, um, which is pretty good for obviously overclocking your cards. A little thank you letter, if I can zoom in, I don't know if you can see that, basically thanking you for any products you purchase from EVGA. Some stickers, which is Enthusiast Build, and their sort of manual on the 10 series and the 900 series graphics cards. But what we really want to look at is how this 1070 Ti Superclock Black Edition actually looks. So, excuse the noise. I'm going to put it down here and open it. This is your 1070 Ti Superclock Black Edition. You've got the two fans as standard. And if you I don't know if you can see, but your heatsink runs from where your display ports are all the way through to the end where you have three pipes going all the way through. There you go. So it dissipates the heat quite well out of here. So if you've got top mounted fans as well, it'll be pulling the heat out. As I said, it's the black edition. It's quite smart. It's going to fit in well to any build. And the only RGB that you have on this card is the EVGA GeForce 1070 Ti along the front there which if you download NVIDIA's LED visualizer software, you can actually change this to double flash, flash, breathing, adjust how quickly that moves, and also the brightness. The only issue I've got with this graphics card that the 1070 had was the PCB back, uh, backplate. 
The Tencent TR doesn't come with one, so I think EVG had missed a little bit of a trick there. I would have liked to see a backplate on this, considering this is about 10 to 20 pound more than the TI and the TI. Uh, the, sorry, the 1070 and the 1070 comes with one. However, as far as aesthetics go, it's quite appealing. Black and grey, it looks smart. Again, just just the finish on these is what I like the most. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and install this in over on Arctic Storm and run a few uh, heaven benchmarks and then show you the scores of that and see if this can be overclocked where Nvidia said it couldn't, which I'm pretty sure it can be. So I will see you in the second part of this video. Transition. EVGA GeForce 1070 Ti Superclock Black Edition is now into Arctic Storm and basically what I'm going to do is run a heaven benchmark and show you what she can do solo. I'm not going to go for a complete overclock of how to do these until I get the other one installed and they're running SLI. However, if you want to see how to 1070s perform in SLI, then please pop on over to the version 1 part 3 of the Arctic Storm vlog and you will see it there. Um, so at the moment, yes it is an 8 gigabyte card you might see 3802 there that's only because i'm recording this video and obviously it's taken the uh, memory clocks down by 200 megahertz so ddr ddr basically double data rate so if you've got an 8 gigabyte card it will show 4 you've got a 10 gigabyte card it will show 5 you've got a 16 gigabyte card it will show 8 there so it is always half of what you actually got because it's da double data rate it will only show that half um, anything that when you do first thing is rump, uh, ramp rump, ramp up your fan speed to full um, this is going to keep your graphics card cool um, and stop it from basically overheating next you want to do is if I just click on number one it makes things easier next you want to do is power target you want to put your power target all the way up and your, power, your voltage limit here all the way up now this and this aren't going to really hurt your GPU the only times it will hurt it is if it's uh, throttling so whenever you're doing a benchmark always have your power limit on if it's at zero you are fine if it reaches one bring down your overclock if it stays at one you're basically going to cause the GPU to overheat and you could pop the processor you could prop any MOSFETs on there um, so yeah just just down clock it if you're reaching one until you get a stable clock now as you can see it's jumped up there and then like I said 150 uh, megahertz offset on the GPU so I'm gonna jump into heaven benchmark I'm gonna run this test and then once it's finished I will come back to you and show you what she can do solo Transition. Hello all, um, so as you can see um, my average uh, FPS was 95.1, uh, my minimum FPS was 31.5 and my max was 193.8. So I got a Heaven Benchmark score of 23.95 with this card over clocks, um, just basic. Um, so I'm going to come out of there and that's with everything on. So what do I think of this card? For the money, um, 500 pounds yeah it's a good card um, what what's the difference between the 1070 and the 1070 ti as i said not not a great deal of difference difference sorry not difference difference it's just a stop gap between the 1070 and the 1080 um, would i go out and buy a 1080 yeah of course i would would i buy a 1080 ti definitely would i like to have two of them hell yes um, but as a stop gap it does pretty well. At a standalone, it's pretty good. It's nice. It's clean. The black edition is actually quite nice. If you've got a dark case, it goes well. Um, if you want to do anything um, to change the visuals ever so slightly, because the EVGA GeForce 1070 Ti logo does light up, um, then you can always download this program here called NVIDIA LED Visualizer. And you can just ch basically go in, I'll show you quickly, um, go into it and you can turn the LEDs on, you can have it breathing, flashing, dual flashing, random which is good, audio flashing and the other one which is variable brightness and adjust the, the speed and the brightness range there. Um, but that's 
that's all you would really do. Um, if you want to customise or get a custom back plate, then yeah, go ahead. I think custom back plates are really, really cool. They add something to a graphics card that nobody else will have because it's personal to you. But on a whole, the GeForce uh, 1070 Ti, yeah, definitely happy with it. Can't wait for the other one to arrive. Can't wait to get these into SLI mode and start messing around and playing with them and overclocking them. And like I said, two 1070s are out. There go in the other builds once I get round to doing them. And there's a few other things I've got to do first. And yeah, very happy. So again, thanks to EVGA for setting me up with the 1070 Ti. Like I said, I can't wait for the other ones to come through. So a big shout out to them. If you're looking for a company that supplies nice looking GPUs, then definitely go to EVGA. Um, if you want my affiliation code, I will drop it in the link below. Um, so yeah, go to EVGA, buy products, use my affiliation code and you will get a, a discount. And um, that's pretty much it. So thank you for watching. Please do like, subscribe and share this. And I shall hope to see you in the next video.